Hello everyone, so today we're doing a book tag Sasha over at a booktopia did this tag and again I'm on Veda season and <laughs> my imagination is very limited so this is called courtship tag and the first question is initial attraction a book you love the cover and bought because of the cover. I said this before like a gazillion times. I love book covers, I love good editions and I buy lots and lots of books because of the cover as well. I have to obviously um, take an interest in the author or the plot. I'm gonna show you a book that I haven't shown you before. Uh, it's called Strawberry Fields Forever by Richard Zimler. This is a YA novel, um, it tells the story of Teresa. She moves from Lisbon to New York and she has a hard time adapting to the new city and new language. She actually has to deal with a lot of family troubles, she just lost her father and she's in love with her one and only best friend, but he's also gay. His name is Angel, he's a big John Lennon fan, hence the name of the book Strawberry Fields Forever. I haven't read this yet, but I picked it up because of the cover. Question number two, first attraction. Um, a book, I picked it up solely because of the summary. I do that a lot. <laughs> I pick up books that I know nothing about the author, had no recommendations whatsoever, just read the back cover or the flaps and just think it's a good idea and go and buy it. A good example of that is All My Friends Are Superheroes by Andrew Kaufman. Uh, I picked this up on a whim and I thought the cover was amazing and then I read this and was absolutely intrigued and had to buy it. All Tom's friends really are superheroes. Tom even married the superhero, the perfectionist. But at the writing, the perfectionist is hypnotized by her ex, Hypo, to believe that Tom is invisible. Nothing he does can make her see him. Six months later, the perfectionist is sure that Tom has abandoned her, so she's moving to Vancouver. <laughs> she will use her superpower to leave all the heartbreak behind. With no idea that Tom's beside her, she boards the plane. Tom has until they touch down to convince her that he's there or he loses her forever. A wonderful and heartbreakingly funny tribute to love. This sounds very very intriguing and it's the next book on my TBR pile. So yeah, I'll probably review it if you would like that. Let me know if you want to see that. Question number three, uh, Sweet Talk. A book that is very beautifully written. My recommendation here is quite obvious, it's a book that I've shown you before like a hundred times, but it has to be this one, I'm, I'm sorry. It is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundra. This is one of my all-time favorite books, this absolutely changed my life and the way I see things. It is a love story, but it's also very political, very philosophical, uh, theological, it makes you question everything about the world and it's just very very touching and very beautifully written just a magical magical book I, I don't have anything else to say number four is first date uh, first book on a collection or series that made you want to read the rest um, unless I absolutely hate the first book on a series I'll probably keep reading the rest because I just don't like letting things half finished. Um, but one book I chose is a book that I absolutely love and completely changed my teenage years and I don't have um, much of a chance to talk about it and I think more people should read it. It is The Mists of Avalon. I, uh, I absolutely love this series. There are four books, I believe, uh, or at least there are four in the edition here in Brazil. This book is a retelling of King Arthur's stories and his knights um, from the point of view of Morgana, his sister, and all of the other magical, mystic beings living in Avalon and the people of the fairies and all of that. I love that it's from the point of view of the females, 
This is incredible. Morgana has always been my favorite character and she's always like the mean one. She's always the villain and I love that in this one she has multiple sides. She, she's a complex character and uh, I just I just really really love this book. Number five, Late Night Phone Calls. A book that you read through the night and into another day. <laughs> Uh, this again is a very obvious pick, but I have to pick it just because I couldn't put it down. I mean, I literally couldn't put it down. It is The Fall of the North Stars by John Green. This is the Brazilian edition, but I also have but I also have the audiobook edition narrated by John Green his, himself. Tiffius is just uh, a book that you read in one sitting. And I finished it like in 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning. And I was crying and crying and really sobbing. And I had to wake up my parents and just say that I couldn't handle, I, I needed help getting over this because this was just so powerful and I was crying so so much my mom had to help me stop crying because I couldn't contain myself this book absolutely destroyed me I was not ready for what happened here and completely off guard so I just cried and cried and read this in the middle of the night and could not sleep because I was thinking about it and just absolutely terrified my parents and all they could say is like why do you do this to yourself? Why? Why do you do this? I don't know. Number six, always on my mind. A book I cannot stop thinking about. It's something that I have recommended before, I believe, but I just want to defend it a little bit because I think lots and lots of people have some sort of prejudice against it. And, and it is Isla and the Happily Ever After. Uh, because of the happily ever after part, I don't know, or because they only read Anna and the French Kiss and because it's titled Anna and the French Kiss. Um, people just assume Isla it's another YA romance and yes it is a YA romance but it's also so 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 much more. It is a tale of being together and how you need a certain type of confidence to be with another person because you can be with anyone else if you don't think you are worth it and there's a phrase from uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower I believe that says you accept the love you think you deserve and this is exactly what Isla is all about it also has many many references about uh, reading and writing and graphic novels. Uh, one of the characters here is actually an artist and he's writing a memoir graphic novel and they talk about graphic novels a lot. There's many many references to good graphic novels and good authors so if you want recommendations on that subject this is very very good and as a whole this was just really really truly amazing and I think if you haven't read this please stop with the silly prejudice against YA romance and just read this because it is truly amazing. Number six is Getting Physical, a book that I like to feel the touch of it. This is Oh 100 Rats, uh, I think that's the title in English, if not I'll put uh, the correct name down below. Uh, this is a graphic novel by Matthew Turbot. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but it is crazy. Just just have a look at this. And this cover, besides being amazing cover, I love the color palette. This mint green with the pink. But this is also a hardcover. And it's not exactly cloth, but I don't know what it is. But it has a little bit of texture. In it. I just love this kind of rough feel it has and just passing my nutrient and having this sound I just it's just amazing as I don't know much about the plot of this book I'll put links to its good read down below so you can check it out uh, again I was just interested in the drawings I know 
I don't know much about the story. Look at this end paper. Links in the description if it caught your eye and you are interested in knowing more about it. Uh, number eight is Meeting the Parents, a book I will recommend to my parents. To my mom, a book I will definitely recommend is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. This book was actually beautifully adapted into a Tom Ford's movie with the same name, uh, with Colin Firth. This really great movie, you should check it out. And I haven't recommended this to my mom yet because it is a terribly, terribly sad book and I just don't want her to be sad. But I know if she reads this, she'll love it and it is quite heart-touching and life-changing. So yeah, but I, I think I'll tell my mom that she should read this, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, number 9 is Thinking About the Future, a book I think I will reread a lot throughout my life. Uh, I'm actually a great rereader, so this, I could reread any of the books I've shown you here, so that question is kind of a mm, reread all the books. Bring it on! And number 10 is actually tag people. And you know I'm terrible at that. Woo! I'm, I really am terrible at tagging people. I don't think I'll tag anyone. But feel free to do it if you wish. Uh, I would really like to see more of these tags because I, I just enjoy tags. And I particularly enjoy this one. So yeah. Hope you did too and hope you want to do this tag and send it to me. Um, I'll see y'all soon. Soon, like tomorrow, I hope. Bye.